Oh, well, first, yep. time, welcome back to my show, post pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good to see. You. So you, you, uh, you, folks can now uh, see you around town a whole bunch. You got some gigs lined up? Yeah, man. Uh, th- things are coming back, and it's it's pretty good. Talk a little it's closer there, Mike. Uh, yeah. It's all feeling pretty good. Yeah, there's there's stuff popping all over town now. Fantastic. Yeah. Where can where can where can we see you? Well. I'm going to rattle this stuff off, but before I do, I'm going to tell you, you could always go to uh, uh, www.johnnysandstone.com. We spend a lot of time trying to maintain a website so people can find out what's going on there you go. With, with the music. And, and Sansone yeah. is a S-A-N-S-O-N-E. That's right. Okay. And it's a Y, not an I-E. Ah. Oh, oh. <laughs> ah. Well, there you go. Uh, but you can find me all over the place. Oh, I said I, but I. I have a YouTube channel, and is this on our Facebook? Uh, Facebook, uh, okay. Uh, Blake, the video videographer, the top videographer, saying it's on our Facebook page and our YouTube. Okay, all right. There you go. This Sorry is, to interrupt. This is amazing. It really is amazing that. Um, we have all these ways to, to reach people now, and 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 somebody uh, could be sitting in Italy in Rome right now. Probably some of my friends. There you go. And they're they'll be able to be right here in the studio in OZ and right now. It's it's really amazing. These are amazing times we live in. So so besides right now on their little screen, where can folks see you around <laughs> uh, around New Orleans? Well, it's always best to come in person. Yes, indeed. Yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> well, tomorrow. At 1.30, I'll be in the Dutch Alley right out here for a, a little, uh, I, um, I think it's the French, some kind of French market. And uh, it's going to be a lot of songwriting stuff uh, tomorrow. All right. And, um, and then Sunday. great place and then i'm very very proud to say that i'll have a residency going on at dba on wednesdays every wednesday in december with my band okay featuring john full and this wednesday before that uh-huh <laughs> okay <laughs> uh they're reopening chicky wawa and i'll be at the celebration of the opening night and that is this coming wednesday there's, they have a second line that starts at 5 o'clock. The doors open at 6. And I'll be doing a little solo set. And uh, they got uh, Johnny Vodakovich, James Singleton, Rab Wagner. A bunch of stuff going on. And we're very excited to see what's going to happen and know that uh, Dale's dream is still alive. Because uh, for, for a lot of us in New Orleans that uh, play original music, um, it, it was a... a, a a real um, important part of our lives. Oh yeah, Dale. Dale created just a little <laughs> oasis there, a great little spot there, Chicky Wawa. And uh, and uh, Dale, we all know Dale passed away a few years back, and Chicky Wawa has been closed. And and how great that you're playing for the uh, the grand opening. These things are real honors for me. I, I I'm you know you you can't um, I mean you can't ask for things. They have to come to you and um, and I'm very proud of this. Well, I I I know Dale is uh, going to smile down on that event and uh, he'll be happy that you're uh, you're 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 leading the pack, leading the charge to reopen that uh, that yeah, club. Yeah, so. I mean even after he was gone when we went in there, he always seemed like he was going to be standing lurking in the corner somewhere. <laughs> so I yeah. guess we yeah. I guess he'll always be there. Oh, yeah, he will. <laughs> he, he'll always be hiding. <laughs> no, he'll be under the soundboard fixing some wire. Like every time I looked over there, just laying on his back behind the soundboard, <laughs> foo game with some wire. So talking to Johnny Sansone, he's playing all kinds of places around town, uh, around town uh, the next month, and uh, and he he'll be uh, uh, playing at the, uh, the the grand opening of DBA this Wednesday. What time are you playing there? I mean, grand opening of Chicky Wawa. Yes. Um... 
I think I'll, it starts. Uh, the doors are at six. I think I play at seven. Okay, and then you're playing a residency at uh, DBA every yeah. Wednesday of December. Yeah, we you know years ago we used to like run all over town trying to get to the next show. I'm getting a little old for that, but you know <laughs> we used to do four or five shows at four or five different locations and. I haven't done it for a while, but I'm, you know, it's well worth it this time. Oh, be like riding a bike. Yeah, <laughs> I might be riding a bike to the gig. Yeah, because <laughs> parking is such a pain in the ass. <laughs> Good thing you play harmonica. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, I've got to play a lot of other stuff too. Man. Okay. And speaking of playing, you, you got your guitar and your harmonica. I didn't. I don't think I knew you played guitar. So, but I, now I do. But you're gonna play some songs for us. It's, uh, this is a very interesting subject um, uh, that um, I could go to different places and people will say, "I didn't know you sing," because uh, <laughs> uh, they'll hear me playing behind Tab Benoit or something. Uh, I didn't know you write songs. Uh -huh. so I'm like, yeah, I've been writing them a long time. <laughs> um, and uh, so, yeah, that's always an interesting thing to show up and say, "Well, I saw you playing all by yourself, but it was." Very interesting. It's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> you don't need all those guys. Yeah. Uh, no, no. Re really, I've, I've been having such a great time. We added people to the band after um, the new record came out. We ended up just putting a bunch of guys that are on the new record out there with us when we did the uh, the uh, Blues and Barbecue Festival here in, in New mm. Orleans, and it's Crescent City Blues and Barbecue Festival. And I had a like eight-piece band, and man, we were loud and proud. It was great. There you go. There you go. But here you are going to be loud and proud with just you and your guitar and your harmonica. What you gonna What you gonna play for? I'll be proud. <laughs> <laughs> I'll turn it up. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> uh, well, uh, you know, all this rigmarole that's been going on about um, Hugh Biggs coming back and people, we didn't know if it was ever going to come back after it burned down. But I, I wrote a song. You know, shortly after the Hugh Biggs burned down and about, you know, uh, how everybody got freaked out and everything. And it was, uh, you know, it was kind of an important thing to everybody that they were not going to see any more Hugh Biggs pies. Oh, we yeah. had a very big conversation locally about this. Uh, we were devastated. And, and uh, you know, other companies tried to make their pies. Right, right. There's something that's just doesn't matter how good they taste. It was a thing that it was more than that. And that's right. So um, uh, when I was writing the song, I realized, well, you can't just write a song about a, a, a pie factory burning down. Uh, something else has to happen. And in song writing, we try and say, well, maybe something else happened that night and we can, you know, make something more out of the song. Okay, now, talk the, a little closer to that, Mike. I'm sorry the, to interrupt the, you, but yeah, there you go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, the uh, one of the important things, I'm, I mean, you can see me there. Um, one of the important things is that um, the song got nominated for Song of, of the Year at the Blues Music Awards okay. in Memphis. And I was very surprised because it's not really that, it's not a blues song. Uh, um, and, and I didn't think people would know what a Hugh Biggs pie is in Memphis so, <laughs> you know, right. or anywhere else <laughs> in the world. Right. But it really didn't matter. It crossed over to, you know, whatever he's talking about, I dig it. You know? <laughs> I don't know what these pies are, but I... They I, sound I, good. <laughs> they sound like they're good, and we get to New Orleans, we better get us one. But we, you can't because we don't have them anymore. Because it burned down. <laughs> but they're back. So, so uh, yeah, so I figured I'd do that song since everybody's, you know... The, the night so, the pie factory burned down. Somebody's eating a pie somewhere right now. Johnny Sansone. All right. It's a good thing to hold on tight On your rough ride without divide 
there would be no end. Yes, in sweetness, we could always depend. Now I'm walking Was a flame, then the smoke detector started to sing. Mr. Hugh Biggs and Savory Simon himself. They both knew there'd be no more pie on the shelf. When morning broke in ashes on the ground, the night the pie factory burned down. Now when you get right down, city is a small town and I guess soon or later she was going to want to try a new flavor but I was a coconut cream she was my sweet potato Things ain't what they seem. You're gonna find out sooner or later. Flower in the sky and sugar in the wind. What have you done, baby? Where have you been? Morning broken ashes on the ground. The night the pie factory burned. Sansone live here at WWOZ. Also, video streaming on our Facebook page and our YouTube page. Uh, Johnny Sansone doing uh, Tonight the Pie Factory oh, yeah. Burned Down. So, sad day. A sad day for Harlan Warren. <laughs> well, Ten, years. Ten years. Have you had your first the Hubix yet since, uh, since they reopened? I did. My buddy Mike Keller. Oh, closer brought, to that mug, yeah. My buddy uh, Mike Keller and his wife dropped a couple pies on my front porch Hot. so that I would. <laughs> Hot damn! <laughs> they, they went to the uh, uh, what was it? The Paul Boy Festival and 
Um, you know, I said people listening to this all over the world going, "What's a Paul boy? What, uh, what, what's a you big boy?" Well, they just need to learn more about New Orleans. That's all. That's all well, I can say. Well, right. it's 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 an it's an amazing tradition, and uh, you know, I I tell this story before um, when we were recording the uh, Voice of the Wetlands record. And we had all these guys coming into the little commissary area at the, at the uh, studio, and each guy would come in would have a, a story because there was a a bowl full of Hugh Biggs pies sitting on the on uh-huh. the table, and, uh-huh. you know. And George Porter would walk in, and he goes, "Oh man, look at all them pies, man! We would, you know, <laughs> I, I, that 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 they got, you know." And he had his favorite his favorite flavor, and Johnny Vodogovich came in, he's like, "Oh man, let me, you know, let me get a pie." <laughs> and then Dr. John came in, and and he said. He looked at the pies and he looked at me, and he said, "You know, when I was a when I was a kid, we used to stop off and buy and I buy two pies on my way to school. <laughs> I put one pie in this pocket and I put one pie in this pocket, and Johnny, I spent my whole day deciding which pie to eat first. <laughs> so, did he say what kind of pies he had? I would really oh, like to know what Dr. John's favorite you know, cubics were. That's some great trivia. You know, there. We don't remember that, and, uh, that, and it was and that uh, was and that happened uh-huh. before we had phones with, uh, you know, cameras and right, you could film all right. the stuff. So yeah, yeah it, it just had to stick in your memory; otherwise, you it was gone. That's still, still it's a great story. That's a great story. Yeah. So um, any story with Dr. John and cubics. <laughs> it's just bound to be a classic. Well, so. <laughs> well as a matter of fact, uh, Black Mold, I got something here that um, that I'm, I'm not exactly sure what you call it or what it is. Okay. Now, when when uh, when Doctor John just had a birthday and and uh, you know we all miss him and I woke up that morning and I thought he was telling me a story while I was asleep. No. Uh. Uh-uh. <laughs> well, I. I I'm going to go ahead and, and say, let me go ahead and try and do this for you. But um, I don't know what it is to call it a poem or call it a song. Or but whatever. Dr. John told you to do this. Well, I'm going to sing it the way Dr. John would have done it. All right. <laughs> okay. All right, sir. Because I've never actually sang this song before. Really? I just wrote it down on the way over here, but I had little notes and stuff. But let's see what happens. Now, as I said before... You know, a, a song should have a couple of different meanings to it in, in order to stay interesting. You don't right. want to just say, people were asking me, why are you going to do a follow-up on the pie factory because it burned down and now it's back and you should do another song about how the pies are back. Right. And, uh, you know, and I thought, well, yeah, that's good, but something else has to happen. You can't just say, oh, the pies are back. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Is it a plane? No, it's a cat that can fly. He was a good dude. A real positive guy. I used to see him around town. He had a lot of soul. I saw him at Chicky Wawa. He was spying on and a Sansoon and Four. Now somebody told me he was this other dude named Clark Kent. I met him once backstage at the Jazz Fest. Hanging out in the blues tent. Now he's also a bad drummer. I thought I saw him playing drums with James Andrews in France last summer.
I'm going to tell you something really weird. Tonight the pie factory burned down. They both disappeared. Now I think they was here because they like to have a good time. But their main gig was fighting crime. Now some people became a politician for this revolution. But that ain't it. Things got real ragged malicious after them can't split. Now tell all the DJs down at WWOZ. It's likely they tune in wherever they might be. So let them know Hugh Biggs is back with all the original flavor. Those superhero crime for crime fighting mother foyers can have any power they want if they just come back and save us. Yeah, you're right. Johnny, Johnny Sansone, WZ Studio, singing uh, uh, Dr. John. <laughs> <laughs> came to you. I got the story straight. Dr. John came to you and told you to do this this story of the of the the Hubix pie coming back, right? Well, I don't. I, I was like, I was kind of dreaming. Yeah. I was kind of asleep. But I I thought Dr. John said to me, "Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's a cat that can fly." And I thought to myself, "What the hell is he talking about?" <laughs> so we had to write the rest back. Well, okay. Well, you know, half the time, none of us knew what no, the hell Dr. Know. John was uh, talking about. Well, that's why I was afraid to actually play this song, because it's not really a song. But uh, if you're an inside information, you probably understand what I was explaining. <laughs> that was great. That was, no, that was great. That was, and and I, gotta, I wrote this down, R Raga Malition, Raga Malicious. Is, well, is that a Dr. John? Is well, that a Macism? Or there's a, definitely a Macism because I, when we were recording that record, uh -huh. um, some pe some dignitaries came into the studio and they wanted <laughs> they wanted Mac to take them down to see the Lower Ninth Ward because uh -huh. it was all messed up. Right, right. <clears throat> and I'll always remember Mac's response. He said. Uh, what do you want to go down there for? It's all ragamalicious and shit. <laughs> ragamalicious. Okay, so, I hadn't heard that one before. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, and it had to, uh, it had to r rhyme with a politician. So I just said ra ragamalician. Oh well, there, there you go, Johnny Sansone. That's how it works. Uh, here in the WWOZ uh, studios, uh, continuing the, the Hubix Pie s saga. Because ten years ago you wrote about the pie factory burning down, and now you wrote about the pie factory, the pies coming back. So. Well, th this is just something for fun. We'll we'll give you a real one. Oh. Well, I'll I'll come up with a real, a real, <laughs> a real, Hubix's is back song. Okay, we we'll oh, make sure we get that one. Okay, but that was pretty great, though. That was pretty great right there. So talk to Johnny uh, Sansone. He's playing around town a whole bunch uh, uh, the next month or so, uh, particularly. Um, uh, next Wednesday, playing at the grand opening of Chicky Wawa. You'll be there around seven. Bam! And then, uh, and then uh, every Wednesday in December, you'll be playing at uh, at uh, DBA, a residency with your band. Who's in your band? That's yeah, going to be so great! I can't wait. No, no. Um, um, <clears throat> well, John Full, Jeff Bridges, same guy's been with me for years and years. Years uh, and years. And uh, and Russ Broussard on drums. And you never know who's going to show up. 
Well, there you, you know, go. Have some guests and stuff, and uh, yeah, but we we sure would like you to come out and support that gig because we you know we haven't been on Frenchman Street and I can't remember how long. So uh, you know we're hoping to to get some people out and and let them know that we we brought everything we've got to throw at them. Well, I hear you. <laughs> I hear you. Be, you're gonna get hit with it if you come out. Maybe a Hubix spot. <laughs> maybe maybe you'll be throwing some Hubix into the audience. Yeah. Huh? There you go. Okay, talking to Johnny Sansone, and keep moving right along, moving right along, because we got plenty to talk talk about. Your new album is really great. Uh, uh, tell us, uh, tell us about that. When did it come out? It's been out for a little while now, and just tell well, us a little bit about recording that album. Well, thank you, Black Mold. We we um, started out as a demo um, during the pandemic thing. You know, we were stuck in the house, so we brought some recording recording equipment into the to my house and moved all the couches and chairs out side and you know, started demoing up some songs but a lot of people had asked me um you know you should make a just a straight ahead blues record and you know well for me it's difficult to write just a whole bunch of blues and and you know because i i just want to write whatever comes out when it comes out and i can't force myself to be just a blues man i tried I failed. <laughs> you, 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 I, re, I remember. I, I remember somebody telling me, uh, "Who was that?" Um, you know, you man cannot live on blues alone. That's, that's I, I right. know because I tried. <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, there's a lot of different sounds. So, uh, yeah, I don't want to take up too much time with this story, but we. We started enjoying it so much and listening to playbacks. It sounded so good. We said, well, this isn't a demo. I think this is a record. So we, we just kept going at it. And uh, it, it took a couple of years because by the time, you know, to put it down and pick it up and the people that were coming through to play on it and um, we wanted to get it out in time for Jazz Fest last year, the last uh, this, this past Jazz Fest. So it was a little bit of a... Um, Ragged malicious trying to get it <laughs> out in time, but it came out and it's doing great all over the world. It was like number one in Australia radio, and people really? seem to dig it. So I'm happy. Yeah, it's a great happy. album. Very it's a happy. great album called "Into Your Blues," and um, let's let's take it on out with a, a song off of um, off the uh, off the new album. And I forgot to ask you all that time we had before we went on the air. What what song you want me to play? Well, uh, I'd let you pick it. You know, title songs are always the best, I suppose. Okay. All right. So This is uh, the title cut. I got it pulled up. He's working on it. No, no. <laughs> DJing's hard. All right, Johnny. Johnny Sanso. Man, it's been so much fun having you stop by. Um, playing both your pie songs, uh, the Hubix Pie, The Night the Factory Burned Down, and burned down. And what's the name of the song you just played for Oh, us it doesn't that? have a name. It's so new. I, I don't know. Uh, Maybe uh, Dr. John will come to you with that. Well, you know, we'll see what happens with it. It may never get played again, but I wanted to bring it for you and your listeners. Well, there you go. <laughs> that's, and that's why you're listening to WWOZ, because you may never hear that anywhere else. That's about right. the Hubix Pies one, coming back. <laughs> one shot. If you weren't there, <laughs> you're out of luck. <laughs> Johnny Sansone, uh, catch him uh, this coming Wednesday at the uh, grand opening of uh, Chicky Wawa around 7, and then uh, every Wednesday at, uh, at DBA's on Frenchman with his band. And... Uh, Johnny, thank you so yeah, much. And tomorrow, af tomorrow afternoon, right here in Dutch Alley, right, right, right next to us here. And there you go. Yeah, well, I'll be down there with the little trio thing. Um, at one, I think it's one thirty. It's a good time for you to come and get one of them, um, one of the local cocktail drinks, and and sit around and listen to some cool music. Um, yeah, that is a one to three. All right, fantastic, Johnny. Th good seeing you. And um, all right. Let me play a message, and then we're going to play uh, the title track to your latest album, Into Your Blues. Black Mold, you're the best, man. Thank you. Oh, you're too kind. You're too kind. Johnny Sansone, man, always great to see you. Support for WWOZ comes from Red Thumb Natural Wines. In New Orleans, ingredients matter. Red Thumb's organically produced wines have only three